Hey guys, this is Andrew Perlot with rawfoodhealth.net, and today we're talking about organic food and the myths surrounding it, the falsehoods which have been portrayed about organic food and how that relates to conventional food. So in our last episode, we, we specifically concentrated on the misconceptions around conventional food and how most people think that they're unsafe, conventional food is unsafe to eat, that it's toxic, that it causes cancer, that it's not worth eating because the risk is too great. And we showed statistically that that is not in fact the case, that the risk of eating conventional produce is extremely low. So with that in mind, there is still a risk. It's a small one, but it's there. So if you say, all right, I don't want to take that risk, or there are some people who have chemical sensitivities, they react very poorly to any synthetic chemical, and maybe for them it would be worth avoiding that. However, if you fall into that category, what are you going to do? Because the answer is most certainly not go to the grocery store and buy organic food. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So why is it not a good idea to just stop buying the conventional and just go and buy organic? Well, namely because you don't really understand what goes into organic food. So there's some misconceptions are that, oh, well, you know, organic food means that there's nothing sprayed on these. There's nothing toxic in there. Well, actually, organic food the USDA program, the federal program that's been set up, has nothing to do with toxicity or health. It has everything to do with naturalness. So, Are you an idealistic supporter of the organic food program? Well then, may I suggest you take a look at the national list of allowed and prohibited substances, because this thing is pretty much going to crush your dreams. If you take a look at this list, you're going to find quite a few toxic substances, which is what you would expect considering that these things are specifically being used to kill insects and fungicides and generally keep disease, uh, crop diseases at bay. But for the purpose of doing a limited, more in-depth investigation, let's talk about one of the most commonly used pesticides, and those are copper-based pesticides. They're a good one to examine because they're an example of where naturalness is actually more toxic than synthetic chemicals. How much more toxic is it than synthetic chemicals? Toxicity in mammals is measured by acute oral toxicity, which is basically they take rats or other rodents and they give them a large dose of the chemical and they see when they die, when they develop cancers, how much does it take to hurt these things? So if we simply look at some of the information printed by the manufacturer, we can actually find what the oral toxicity is for something like copper sulfate. They clearly state that it's 300 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. The manufacturer also mentions that it tends to wash into the water, and when it does, it's fairly toxic to aquatic life. Now let's talk about Syngenta, which is something that you might use in place of copper sulfate if you were growing conventionally and using synthetic chemicals. Syngenta's oral toxicity is 5,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and it's noted as being significantly less toxic to aquatic life. That means if we use those particular two chemicals that we would be somewhere in the ballpark of 15 to 17 times more toxic to go with the organic option than to go with the synthetic. But it actually gets worse because copper sulfate and other copper-based chemicals are actually dramatically less effective than synthetic chemicals at actually keeping pests at bay, and therefore you need to apply dramatically more. Copper-based chemicals generally require several pounds per acre to be used and need to be applied more frequently, but a lot of synthetic chemicals often only require a few ounces per acre and need to be applied much less frequently. The cruel irony is that in many cases, synthetics are better for the environment than the more toxic organic chemicals. 
So what about multiple chemical sensitivities? A lot of people, when they eat synthetic chemicals, they just react really poorly. Well, unfortunately, if you were to test organic produce, you'd find that it is in fact covered, some of it is covered with synthetic chemicals. Why? Several studies, including this one published in 2012 by the USDA, have looked to see, hey, are synthetic chemicals getting on organic produce? And their conclusions are that, yeah, they definitely are. While pesticide residues are less common in organic produce than in conventional produce, detection of pesticide residues in organic produce is still common. They blame spray drift, mislabeling, post-harvest contamination, and some other factors. Now another commonly believed thing is that organic food is more nutritious. Is there anything to that? Now Stanford University is a pretty credible academic institution. They're not some agricultural school that's just promoting the status quo and their review of uh, over 200 studies, their meta-analysis, came to a very firm conclusion. There is no good evidence that organic food is more nutritious than conventional. Now I know that some of you out there are thinking, but Andrew, what about the monarch butterflies which are now on the verge of extinction? And what about the honeybees which have been dying off in huge numbers. Isn't pesticide, isn't synthetic chemicals at the basis of this? I understand the urge to have a simple big villain that you can point your finger at, but if you actually examine the data things are much less clear-cut. I highly suggest you check out the work of Randy Oliver who is a trained biologist who makes his living as a beekeeper and his writings are really interesting. In particular, his article, What Happened to the Bees This Spring, really covers the complexity of the issue very well. Now, I received a large amount of negative feedback after my last video on conventional produce being safe, people basically saying that I was being a shill for the chemical industry. So I just thought I'd take a minute to make my sympathies known. I've completed a two-week permaculture design course and put those ideologies into play in organic and permaculture farms in Asia. I have dug swales on rocky hillsides. I have dug check dams. I have planted bananas and I have planted fruit trees. I have harvested mangoes and I have planted rice and rice patties, which is a back-breaking labor, let me tell you. My experience has shown me something, and that is that if we as a human species want to survive with our civilization intact to the year 3000, we are going to have to make some very dramatic changes to our agricultural system or risk losing this planet entirely. Things are beginning to spiral out of control. We are losing soil way too fast. We are losing biodiversity way too fast. This thing is a sinking ship. Our agricultural systems need to change, and they need to change quickly because we're eating this planet down to the bones. Yes, we certainly need to move away from animal agricultural systems which are incredibly wasteful and polluting. But more importantly, we need to move away from this. Monocrops, hundreds of thousands of acres planted across the world of the exact same thing. Two or three or six species across all of that. What we need are perennial polyculture systems that have dozens of species within just a few feet. When properly designed, these can offer more production across multiple species than you could get with a monoculture and it uses less money to produce it and it uses less human labor. This may sound idealistic to some, but the methods are proven. Check out the trailer for the movie The Permaculture Orchard to see these principles in action. This is a far northern climate that has a short growing season, and yet they create an incredible amount of diversity and more profit than they could get if they were producing a monoculture. The problems in our agricultural system and the problems with our medical system are almost one and the same in the sense that they all want to 
focus on the symptoms rather than addressing the underlying cause. Most humans are on drugs because they eat horribly and don't live a healthy lifestyle. If they had all just adopted a raw vegan diet, their problems would mostly go away. Well over 90% of our medications would cease if everyone just started eating well and living well. Their lives are on the line, but they don't want to change because it would mean changing how they live their lives. Similarly, if we were to correct our agricultural system and change it to a diverse polyculture perennial system, then we wouldn't need almost all instances of chemicals. But no one's ready to realize that their diets are horrible, that they shouldn't be eating these crazy perennial crops, that they shouldn't be eating these animals, and so things stay the same, and people fixate on conventional versus organic, but largely it's not all that important. So if you can find a good organic polyculture or perennial based agriculture farm, absolutely support them if you know they don't spray anything. Absolutely, give them your money, build them up, but don't concentrate on organic. So guys, I hope I cleared that up between episode one where we're talking about how healthy conventional produce is in this episode where we kind of debunked the need for buying organic, I think you should have some valuable information. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try and go out and buy from a grower who doesn't put anything on there, but those guys are rare. They're very rare. And usually it's just small scale productions that do that. So if you can get that, awesome. And particularly if you have problems with like chemical sensitivity, probably worth your time but going organic is not what the public thinks it is. It's not as valuable, it's not powerful, there's very little advantage to health. So my suggestion, go with the cheap, awesome produce that's available at the grocery store. It will radically improve your health. See you later, guys.